children need to be recognized and validated as the independent human beings that they are and not regarded as um, sort of passive recipients of what adults want to pass them. Your children are not your children. They are the sons and the daughters of light. Long for itself, they come through you. But they are not from you. And though they are with you, they belong not to you. This was brought to me by a student at U School. She brought it um, proposing that her class sing it for a program. And I listened to it and fell in love with it on the first hearing. I love the piece partly because of the way they sing it and partly because of the lyric. It's called On Children, which uh, the, the lyric isn't really a lyric. It's um, by Khalil Gibran. In 1989-1990, I was doing Gilbert and Sullivan with the kids. And this was before I consensus cast. I mean, it's not like I just did consensus casting out of the blue. I did it out of pain <laughs> because I had used the audition method. I was doing things like HMS Pinafore and the Pirates of Penzance, which are a lot of fun and I love them. But the problem with them is that they have seven lead roles. And you, if you do it with a class of 30, this is bound to create some inequities. I, my co-author is Joy Chayton, um, who is a dramatist. And at the time, Joy was one of my parents. Her daughter, Sharon, was going to university school. And as a matter of fact, when she was in sixth grade, we did HMS Pinafore. And that class had all kinds of issues about how the parts were selected, even though I cut buttercup into three sections and Josephine was played by four kids and you know after that I chatted with Joy and we said you know they, we need something that will be a vehicle for classes and she said what we should do is um, a review our -E -E, -E, musical and so she proposed on time which is a musical that looks at time from nine different perspectives and each perspective has its own mini cast of five kids four five six kids and it has its own song so then you're not casting an entire musical you're casting a vignette this was a coaching session always before i do a show that's the cadenza <laughs> this was a coaching session so that they can familiarize themselves with the parts. I like to do that on lunch recess so that the kids get a chance to do it in a non-threatening atmosphere where um, they don't feel like the whole class is looking at them and also so that it's on a volunteer basis. It's not as if they have to be here. Mm -hmm. They're here because they want to be here. So it's fun to do it this way too because they, they get each ideas from one another um, kids from all three classes are here. They will be three separate casts, mm -hmm. but right now they're all here together and they can share ideas among the casts. And when you do things in the regular classroom, all three classes won't be here to share. So this has several advantages. I'm just starting to try to place people into parts. Um, this is going to be a, the hardest show for me to do that with that I've ever used because there's probably 50 to 60 parts and I'm trying to do two really incompatible things, which is make everybody happy and make it the best show possible. And so I'm, it's a matter of just trying to fit all of the pieces together until I get a whole that works out. But I'm just now listening and seeing how various ways the puzzle could be put together.
Every child is so different. Listen to your child. Find out who they are, where they want to go, what they want to do, what interests them. Find out what their passions are. You know, before I taught and before I had a child especially, I really thought that you can hand people information, but you can't. You, they have to pull it from you. And so with each child, what you want to do is find out what it is they're going to be able to pull. Everybody has such different learning styles. I'm the music teacher and I have marvelous equipment that allows me to do so many different kinds of things in my classroom. We can do recorder ensembles, orf ensembles, keyboard, um, choral singing, theater. We have a lovely theater area. Um, it's, it's, I can't think of any place I would rather be. trying to do is to give them a basic understanding of theory and harmony, to allow them to be able to take a piece of music, hear it, figure out what notes are in it, and then figure out what chords would go with those notes. So we're talking really, really, really basic music theory here and, and oral anal analysis. Mm -hmm. your right hand up in the air and try to copy what I'm doing with my right hand with your right hand. We're going to go like this. Do, re, mi, mi, re, do, re, re, do. What I'm hoping is that they will be able to take the information that I'm presenting to them on first go up and transfer it to other songs. You're going to put your fifth finger on C, your third finger on E, and your thumb on G, and you're going to try to get all three fingers down at once. Then the next move you're going to make is to switch from the C major chord to the G major chord. C major, G major, C major, G major. Now, the first time you do it, the first time you do it, it's going to be very, very, very slow. And you're going to have to think it through really carefully. So you're going to start out like this, and then slowly, leaving your hand in that same position, move it up, and then slowly move it down. Once you can do it fairly fluidly, then you can add the chords. They thought that playing the piano was a talent, not a skill. They thought that it was something that you either could or you couldn't, not something that everybody can learn. They thought that being able to pick something out by ear without having a piece of music in front of them is a talent, not a skill. And the idea that it's a skill that has steps that can be learned sequentially, and if you've accomplished this, then you can progress to this and so forth, is very exciting to them. <laughs> The most important thing that I hope they take from this experience is the idea that as a group member, one needs to focus on the needs of the group and on how they can make a contribution to the group and how when they are able to make that kind of contribution to the group, the group also supports them. You know, to, to function in this world, we have to learn to be mutually supportive people and that is 
I think the most important thing that being in a show like this teaches. We really focused on making sure that there were enough roles so that every child could have a, a major thing to do. In addition, I wrote the music so that the children could completely accompany themselves on, in sort of a, an or instrument pit, um, a percussion um, orchestra. Um, so the kids are not only uh, acting on the stage, singing, dancing, and acting, but also they are the orchestra for this show. There are five different folk tales. One is from Africa, one is from Japan, one is from Ireland, one is from Venezuela, and the last one is from a Snohomish tribe in Northern America. This is a multicultural performance featuring folk tales from around the world. I believe that pitch sense is for the most part learned. Maybe some people have greater proclivities to pick it up than others. Um, but I really think that for the most part, most people can become very, very good musicians, especially if they start working on it when they're very young. So I have everybody in the school, and even the kindergarten, come in and sing me a high C, and we're doing it in solfege, solfege, which is do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do. And so they genuinely walk in the door singing the high C. Literally, the door opens, and I hear the next class singing the C as they come in, and they then check it out on one of the xylophones to see how it is. I have incredible students at University Elementary School. They are, I don't even want to call them students. They are incredible human beings. They have an understanding of the value of the team. And it's not just because of what we do in my class. The other teachers at university school use what's called the class method of classroom management, which talks about procedures and ways of respecting one another within the classroom. So everywhere they go, and they are thinking about how to function well as a group. Amazing Grace. One of my favorite songs of all time. I've always loved this song. I love the lyric, I love um, the music, I love it especially when it's done gospel style. I had a class that wanted to do it on a program and it's done in very difficult harmony and they wanted to do it that way. So we worked on that and they got it in three-part harmony so that it sounded fabulous.
Listen, there's no time to wait. What happened on September 11th uh, impacted absolutely everyone. I was just like everyone else, completely horrified and astounded that anything like this could happen. And so my response was to write a song which was called September 11th, which told the story. It was a ballad. I co-wrote this with Catherine Marchese. And people said after that to both of us, no one can listen to that song. It's just too painful to listen to the lyric. And they said, you need to take the last part, which was the chorus, and turn that into an entire song. And so that's what this song is. It's just one planet.
just 